Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are starting a new series on dressing out an 1850s reproduction doll. So we are starting with her trunk. Alright, so here's the trunk we're working with. <laughs> um, it's just an old antique trunk I found online. I don't think it's from the 1850s, but I think it could be. I don't know anything about trunks. It's old. But that's all I know about it. Um, it came in decent condition. I think we are going to clean off the top and the sides and all that and probably refinish it. Um, but the inside isn't actually all that bad. There is paper stuff covering everything, so we do need to clean that out. Um, but we're going to just refinish this so we have a little doll. Um, space for the dolls. Or a doll. One of the dolls. Let's put it down and we'll work on it. So the whole thought process behind this whole doll project is I bought the dolls like several years ago and um, the purpose behind buying them was I wanted to be able to talk about women's undergarments and that sort of thing with the dolls because although I have no issues um, showing my petticoats or unbuttoning a bodice to show people my corset. I've been informed it's not always, you know, appropriate. So it'd be nice to talk about it some other way. I don't like the sound this thing makes. It kind of weirds me out. So I may not be doing this very long. I'll probably just use my fingers for the vast majority of it. Put it in the corner. So that's the thought process behind the dolls and why I have them. Oh, come on. Aha. And I'm looking forward to kind of getting them dressed out. So we're only going to do the 1850s doll this year. I get her all dressed out and then we'll work on, I don't know, I probably the 1860s doll next. So that's the one I have. I mean, we might skip around. I might buy more dolls. Eventually, I'd like to have a doll per decade that I do. So like 1830 to like 1870s. That's the uh, eventual goal. So we'll be on dolls for a while, but it'd be nice. Um, I'm not really a doll person, but again, I wanted them to kind of show fashion, and it's a lot easier to carry around a wardrobe for a doll than it is to carry around a wardrobe for me. And I thought that's a great way to educate people and not, you know, totally overload my car each time. Because it's really easy just to show a whole doll's wardrobe. And that's where the thought process behind this came out. And it's been on my mind for several years, because I've had the dolls for several years. I just never got around to it. And I'm actually kind of excited to be getting around to it. Alright, so I have cleaned it out. Uh, as much as I'm going to anyway. Uh, that's going to be about it. So uh, most of it's gone. Some of it isn't. Um, but I think it's about as good as it's going to get. So. Cut a little wet rag. Or a damp rag really is not even wet. So it's kind of dirty inside. I'm just kind of wiping it off. I am not using a period sealant today, I'm just going to use polyurethane, the satin stuff. I just want to restore some shine to it. Can you see the difference? Big shiny side? Not a shiny side. I mean, it's not completely done, and it'll dry some, so it's not going to be that shiny. But... Hopefully it'll make it look like a little bit better. Why this dries, I'm going to find another project to work on in the meantime. And when it dries, we'll come over and paper it. We're going to need to um, do a little bit of sealing just on the inside, like where these gaps are. That's going to need to be sealed. Uh, but I want to make sure this dries before I try to do that. Alright. It's all sealed, mostly dry, so it's slightly sticky, but you were going to keep going with it. So I have here the paper, um, which is an 1850s pattern, I think from the Met, and then I just put it on spoon flour and 
now I have wallpaper. So, yep, that's what I did. And so we're going to attempt, anyway, to put this in here. It's quite thick, so we're going to play with it. So, I use the removable kind. I don't really like that it feels, it doesn't feel like wallpaper does. So, with the removable backing. So, I'm going to try a different kind next time, but I already paid for this one, so we're going to use it for this one. Alright, I thought I was feeling for all this, but apparently I was not. So, uh, this is what it's looking like right now. I'm not overly thrilled with it. Partially because of this curve here is making these edges just a little bit off. And apparently I did not buy the pre-pasted stuff. I bought the, oh wait, I did not buy the peel and removal. I brought the I bought the pre-pasted, not the peel and stick. Uh, so it basically means you get it wet and it should stick. It was not sticking to the wood. So I am, am, so I am instead using uh, book binding glue and it seems to be holding things pretty well. A lot better than this side. That side has wrinkles in it. I'm not sure how I could have fixed those, but okay. We're gonna leave it like that. That looks cute. Alright. Pull that out. Alright, so that part's done. Can do the bottom at least. That's all nice and smooth. And I can go ahead and cut this down. Wait for them just. Oops, that's close. Go ahead and pour just a little bit of glue in here. Really get underneath that little lip. Top of the lip. Everywhere I'm going. There we go. Okay. Can you tall enough? I didn't make it tall enough. Okay. Well, well it might be. It's gonna be really close. Alright, 
that and leave that to dry. It's looking pretty good. And now we can do the same thing to this one. That definitely could have been better. Oh well. Alright. Now I gotta wait for glue to dry. And I should probably get all the glue off my hands while we're waiting for it to dry. And I need to find the cap to this glue. I have no idea where that went. Yep. Just very quickly. I just want to make sure this still fits. Oh, good, good, good. Perfect. Okay. Waiting for glue to dry. And then we can take a look at it with the doll. And here we are, finished box, trunk, whatever we want to call it, um, with the doll. So this is a completely reconstruction doll by Annabelle, um, by Annabelle's World, I believe, is the maker of them. Um, she made the complete doll for me, and um, about five, six years ago, uh, 1850 style. Her little wide hair, and so she's not antique. So I feel confident. Um, if children wanted to handle her, again, to teach about women's clothing, I feel confident with this doll because she's not an antique. But, yeah, she doesn't entirely fit in her box, but if I fold her legs, she fits. So, we're going to call that good enough. She's still not named. I've had her for like five or six years and I've never named her. I don't know, I might just go to the year 1850 and find what the most common name is and name her that. It's probably going to be Mary because I'm pretty sure most of the 19th century the most popular name for girls was Mary. Um, which is going to be difficult because I do one for 1840 and 1830 and 1860s and 1870s. We're going to need to have different names for all of them. They can't all be Mary. We'll figure something out. I might just put the top five names for the year 1850 in a bowl and pick one out. That's probably what we're going to do. I actually might do that on camera in a minute. But a nice little space for the doll, underpinnings, that sort of thing. And there's lots of space in there for whatever we need to put in there. She's going to have quite a few outfits, I think. Um, I think we're going to start with chemise, drawers, and corset next month. Uh, that's going to be the first step. And then it's going to be uh, skirt supports like petticoats and that sort of thing before we start getting to dresses and accessories and all that. So eventually she'll have bonnets, she'll have dresses, she'll have knitted accessories, um, all sorts of things, and I'm going to hopefully publish the patterns uh, so y'all have access to all that too. So it's not just going to be me making a doll. If you have something you need to do for a doll, you'll have all the patterns here um, as part of a series. So, something to look forward to. And even if you're not totally into historic costuming yet, 
dolls are something that's um, easier. It requires less fabric. It's not as quite as daunting. Um, I find sewing for dolls difficult because it's tiny little pieces, but uh, most people find it easier than sewing a whole dress, and it's a lot easier to fit something like this than it is an actual moving body. So if you're interested in historic clothing but not um, ready to start making your own clothes or clothes for somebody else, dolls are a good place to start. And it's really easy to undress dolls and teach other people about dolls as opposed to um, actually undressing a human being, which which I feel comfortable doing, but a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing, and that's perfectly okay. Um, just because I'm weird doesn't mean everyone else has to be. So, yeah, that was a fun little project. I mean, it did not turn out fantastic. Maybe by the time we get to the last doll, I'll actually know what I'm doing when we're covering these boxes, but it's not terrible. I mean, it passes like a five-foot rule for the most part. I can I can tell that it's off, but that's because I made it. So I think if you didn't know, it would take you a few minutes to actually notice it. So I'm okay with it. Still going to be looking for a lock on this box, but as for right now, I think we're where it needs to be. Uh, and she has a little box so now she can keep all her stuff in there. Excuse her nakedness, she doesn't have clothes yet. Here, that way. There we go. Now she's sitting up in it. All right. Uh, I think the wallpaper itself looks great, though. I'm very happy with that. It was a little difficult getting the exact pattern to like repeat enough to actually get a piece. And there's a little tiny mistake by I think about a pixel, maybe two pixels. But it's a very. It's not very noticeable, and I'm okay with it. So. I think the process itself like, turned out well, and then um, the box looks great. And the box, definitely putting that um, coat on it, that polyurethane, it is really nice. I mean, it, ma it made the whole thing look brighter, um, richer, it, even though it didn't add a gloss really, it just looks so much nicer uh, when it's finished like that. So I'm very glad that happened. And the wallpaper itself looks really nice. I mean, though I didn't do a great job recovering it, but the actual colors and everything, I think it looks really nice. So, I'm looking forward to starting this little journey. Dolls are not really a thing of mine, but I'm willing to try. So, I will see you next month on this doll journey with underpinning, chemise, drawers, and corset. All right, let's pick a name real quick. So, I looked it up. And in England, in 1850, the, most, the five most popular girl names were Mary, Elizabeth, Sarah, Anna, Jane. Seems right, Mary was the most popular. So, we're going to like pick these, hold them up, and now we're going to pick one. I think that was a 